Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabaoth, plenis uccelli et terra, gloria tua, usana in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini. And the Lord said to Aaron, Thou, and thy sons, and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the sins of your priesthood.
and take with thee thy brethren also of the tribe of Levi, and the scepter of thy father, and let them be ready in hand, and minister to thee, but thou and thy son shall minister in the tabernacle of the testimony. And the Levites shall watch to do thy commands, and about all the works of the tabernacle, only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary nor the altar, lest both they die, and you also perish with them. But let them be with thee, and watch in the charge of the tabernacle, and in all the ceremonies thereof. A stranger shall not join himself with you. Watch ye in the charge of the sanctuary, and in the ministry of the altar, lest indignation rise upon the children of Israel. And thy father's house with thee, shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, that is, you shall be punished if, through negligence or want of due attention, you are in the discharge of the sacred functions for which you are ordained. I have given you your brethren the Levites from among the children of Israel, and have delivered them for a gift to the Lord, to serve in the ministries of the tabernacle. But thou and thy sons look ye to the priesthood, and all things that pertain to the service of the altar, and that are within the veil, shall be executed by the priests. If any stranger shall approach, he shall be slain. And the Lord said to Aaron, Behold I have given thee the charge of my first fruits. All things that are sanctified by the children of Israel, I have delivered to thee and to thy sons for the priestly office, by everlasting ordinances. These therefore shalt thou take of the things that are sanctified, and are offered to the Lord. Every offering, and sacrifice, and whatsoever is rendered to me for sin and for trespass, and becometh holy of holies, shall be for thee and thy sons. Thou shalt eat it in the sanctuary, the males only shall eat thereof because it is a consecrated thing to thee. But the fierce fruits, which the children of Israel shall vow and offer, I have given to thee, and to thy sons, and to thy daughters, by a perpetual law. He that is clean in thy house, shall eat them. All the best of the oil, and of the wine, and of the corn, whatsoever first fruits they offer to the Lord, I have given them to thee. All the first ripe of the fruits, that the ground bringeth forth, and which are brought to the Lord shall be for thy use, he that is clean in thy house, shall eat them. Everything that the children of Israel shall give by vow, shall be thine. Whatsoever is firstborn of all flesh, which they offer to the Lord, whether it be of men, or of beasts, shall belong to thee, only for the firstborn of man thou shalt take a price, and every beast that is unclean thou shalt cause to be redeemed. And the redemption of it shall be after one month, for five sickles of silver, by the weight of the sanctuary. A sickle hath twenty obols. But the firstling of a calend of a sheep and of a goat thou shalt not cause to be redeemed, because they are sanctified to the Lord. Their blood only thou shalt pour upon the altar, and their fat thou shalt burn for a most sweet odor to the Lord. But the flesh shall fall to thy use, as the consecrated breast, and the right shoulder shall be thine. All the first fruits of the sanctuary which the children of Israel offer to the Lord. I have given to thee and to thy sons and daughters, by a perpetual ordinance. It is a covenant of salt for ever before the Lord, to thee and to thy sons. And the Lord said to Aaron, You shall possess nothing in their land, neither shall you have a portion among them, I am thy portion and inheritance in the midst of the children of Israel. A covenant of salt, it is a proverbial expression, signifying a covenant not to be altered or corrupted as salt is used to keep things from corruption, a covenant perpetual, like that by which it was appointed, that salt should be used in every sacrifice. Lev. And I have given to the sons of Levi all the tithes of Israel for a possession for the ministry wherewith they serve me in the tabernacle of the covenant, that the children of Israel may not approach any more to the tabernacle, nor commit deadly sin, but only the sons of Levi may serve me in the tabernacle, and bear the sins of the people. It shall be an everlasting ordinance in your generations. They shall not possess any other thing, but be content with the oblation or tithes, which I have separated for their uses and necessities. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Deadly sin, that is, sin which will bring death after it. Command the Levites, and declare unto them, When you shall receive of the children of Israel the tithes, which I have given you, offer the firstfruits of them to the Lord that is to say, the tenth part of the tenth, that it may be reckoned to you as an oblation of first fruits, as well of the barn floors as of the wine presses, 
and of all the things of which you receive tithes, offer the first fruits to the Lord, and give them to Aaron the priest. All the things that you shall offer of the tithes, and shall separate for the gifts of the Lord, shall be the best and choicest things. And thou shalt say to them, If you offer all the goodly and the better things of the tithes, it shall be reckoned to you as if you had given the first fruits of the barn floor and the wine press. And you shall eat them in all your places, both you and your families, because it is your reward for the ministry, wherewith you serve in the tabernacle of the testimony. And you shall not sin in this point, by reserving the choicest and fat things to yourselves, lest you profane the oblations of the children of Israel, and die. The Law of the Sacrifice of the Red Cow, and the Water of Expiation And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the observance of the victim, which the Lord hath ordained. Command the children of Israel, that they bring unto thee a red cow of full age, in which there is no blemish, and which hath not carried the yoke, and you shall deliver her to Eleazar the priest, who shall bring her forth without the camp, and shall immolate her in the sight of all, and dipping his finger in her blood, shall sprinkle it over against the door of the tabernacle seven times, and shall burn her in the sight of all, delivering up to the fire her skin, and her flesh, and her blood, and her dung. A red cow, this red cow, offered in sacrifice for sin, and consumed with fire without the camp, with the ashes of which, mingled with water, the unclean were to be expiated and purified, was a figure of the Passion of Christ by whose precious blood applied to our souls in the holy sacraments, we are cleansed from our sins. The priest shall also take cedar wood, and hyssop, and scarlet twice dyed, and cast it into the flame, with which the cow is consumed. And then after washing his garments, and body, he shall enter into the camp, and shall be unclean until the evening. He also that hath burned her, shall wash his garments, and his body, and shall be unclean until the evening. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the cow, and shall pour them forth without the camp in a most clean place, that they may be reserved for the multitude of the children of Israel, and for a water of aspersion, because the cow was burnt for sin. And when he that carried the ashes of the cow, hath washed his garments, he shall be unclean until the evening. The children of Israel, and the strangers that dwell among them, shall observe this for a holy thing by a perpetual ordinance. He that toucheth the corpse of a man, and is therefore unclean seven days, shall be sprinkled with this water on the third day, and on the seventh, and so shall be cleansed. If he were not sprinkled on the third day, he cannot be cleansed on the seventh. Every one that toucheth the corpse of a man, and is not sprinkled with mixture, shall profane the tabernacle of the Lord, and shall perish out of Israel, because he was not sprinkled with the water of expiation, he shall be unclean and his uncleanness shall remain upon him. This is the law of a man that dieth in a tent, all that go into his tent and all the vessels that are there, shall be unclean seven days. The vessel that hath no cover, nor binding over it, shall be unclean. If any man in the field touch the corpse of a man that was slain, or that died of himself, or his bone, or his grave, he shall be unclean seven days. And they shall take of the ashes of the burning and of the sin offering and shall pour living waters upon them into a vessel. And a man that is clean shall dip hyssop in them, and shall sprinkle therewith all the tent, and all the furniture, and the men that are defiled with touching any such thing, and in this manner he that is clean shall purify the unclean on the third and on the seventh day. And being expiated the seventh day, he shall wash both himself and his garments, and be unclean until the evening. If any man be not expiated after this rite, his soul shall perish out of the midst of the church, because he hath profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, and was not sprinkled with the water of purification, this precept shall be an ordinance for ever. He also that sprinkled the water, shall wash his garments. Every one that shall touch the waters of expiation, shall be unclean until the evening. Whatsoever a person toucheth who is unclean, he shall make it unclean, and the person that toucheth any of these things, shall be unclean until the evening. The death of Mary the sister of Moses. The people murmur for want of water, God giveth it them from the rock. The death of Aaron. And the children of Israel, and all the multitude came into the desert of sin, in the first month, and the people abode in Cades. And Mary died there, 
and was buried in the same place. And the people wanting water, came together against Moses and Aaron, and making a sedition, they said, Would God we had perished among our brethren before the Lord! Why have you brought out the church of the Lord into the wilderness, that both we and our cattle should die? Why have you made us come up out of Egypt, and have brought us into this wretched place which cannot be sowed, nor bringeth forth figs, nor vines, nor pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink? And Moses and Aaron leaving the multitude, went into the tabernacle of the covenant, and fell flat upon the ground, and cried to the Lord, and said, O Lord God, hear the cry of this people, and open to them thy treasure, a fountain of living water, that being satisfied, they may cease to murmur. And the glory of the Lord appeared over them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and assemble the people together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak to the rock before them, and it shall yield waters. And when thou hast brought forth water out of the rock, all the multitude and their cattle shall drink. Moses therefore took the rod, which was before the Lord, as he had commanded him, and having gathered together the multitude before the rock, he said to them, Here, ye rebellious and incredulous, can we bring you forth water out of this rock? And when Moses had lifted up his hand, and struck the rock twice with the rod, there came forth water in great abundance, so that the people and their cattle drank, and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not believed me, to sanctify me before the children of Israel, you shall not bring these people into the land, which I will give them. This is the water of contradiction, where the children of Israel strove with words against the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. In the meantime Moses sent messengers from caves to the king of Edom, to say, Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the labor that hath come upon us, in what manner our fathers went down into Egypt, and there we dwelt a long time, and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. The rock, this rock was a figure of Christ, and the water that issued out from the rock, of his precious blood, the source of all our good. You have not believed, the fault of Moses and Aaron, on this occasion, was a certain diffidence and weakness of faith, not doubting of God's power or veracity, but apprehending the unworthiness of that rebellious and incredulous people, and therefore speaking with some ambiguity. The water of contradiction, or strife. Hebrew, Mriba. And how we cried to the Lord, and he heard us, and sent an angel, who hath brought us out of Egypt. Lo, we are now in the city of Gades, which is in the uttermost of thy borders, and we beseech thee that we may have leave to pass through thy country. We will not go through the fields, nor through the vineyards, we will not drink the waters of thy wells, but we will go by the common highway neither turning aside to the right hand, nor to the left, till we are past thy borders. And Edom answered them, Thou shalt not pass by me, if thou dost I will come out armed against thee. And the children of Israel said, We will go by the beaten way, and if we and our cattle drink of thy waters, we will give thee what is just, there shall be no difficulty in the price, only let us pass speedily. But he answered, Thou shalt not pass and immediately he came forth to meet them with an infinite multitude, and a strong hand. Neither would he condescend to their desire to grant them passage through his borders. Wherefore Israel turned another way from him. And when they had removed the camp from Gades, they came to Mount Hur, which is in the borders of the land of Edom, where the Lord spoke to Moses, Let Aaron, saith he, go to his people, for he shall not go into the land which I have given the children of Israel because he was incredulous to my words, at the waters of contradiction. Take Aaron and his son with him, and bring them up into Mount Hur. And when thou hast stripped the father of his vesture, thou shalt vest there with Eleazar his son, Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and die there. Moses did as the Lord had commanded, and they went up into Mount Hur before all of the multitude. And when he had stripped Aaron of his vestments, he vested Eleazar his son with them. And Aaron being dead in the top of the mountain, he came down with Eleazar. And all the multitude seeing that Aaron was dead, mourned for him thirty days throughout all of their families. King Arad is overcome. The people murmur and are punished with fiery serpents. They are healed by the brazen serpent. They conquer the king Sihon and Og. And when King Arad the Chananite, who dwelt towards the south, 
had heard this, to wit, that Israel was come by the way of the spies, he fought against them, and overcoming them carried off their spoils. But Israel binding himself by vow to the Lord, said, If thou wilt deliver this people into my hand, I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord heard the prayers of Israel, and delivered up the Chananite, and they cut them off and destroyed their cities, and they called the name of that place Horma, that is to say, Anathema. And they marched from Mount Her, by the way that leadeth to the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the people began to be weary of their journey and labor, and speaking against God and Moses, they said, Why didst thou bring us out of Egypt, to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, nor have we any waters, our soul now loatheth this very light food. Anathema, that is, a thing devoted to utter destruction. Very light food, so they call the heavenly manna, thus worldlings loathe the things of heaven, for which they have no relish. Wherefore the Lord sent among the people fiery serpents, which bit them and killed many of them. Upon which they came to Moses, and said, We have sinned, because we have spoken against the Lord and thee, pray that he may take away these serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to him, Make brazen serpent, and set it up for a sign, whosoever being struck shall look on it, shall live. Moses therefore made a brazen serpent, and set it up for a sign, which when they that were bitten looked upon, they were healed. And the children of Israel setting forwards camped in Oboth. Fiery serpents, they are so called, because they that were bitten by them were burnt with a violent heat. A brazen serpent, this was a figure of Christ crucified, and of the efficacy of a lively faith in him, against the bites of the hellish serpent. John. And departing thence they pitched their tents in Gebarim, in the wilderness, that faceth Moab toward the east. And removing from thence, they came to the torrent Zerd, which they left and encamped over against Arnon, which is in the desert and standeth out on the borders of the Amorite. For Arnon is the border of Moab, dividing the Moabites and the Amorites. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, as he did in the Red Sea, so will he do in the streams of Amen. The rocks of the torrents were bowed down that they might rest in Ar, and lie down in the borders of the Moabites. The Book of the Wars, an ancient book, which, like several others quoted in Scripture, has been lost, when they went from that place, the well appeared whereof the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sung this song, Let the well spring up. They sung there too, the well, which the princes dug, and the chiefs of the people prepared by the direction of the lawgiver, and with their staves. And they marched from the wilderness to Mathana. From Mathana unto Nahliel, from Nahliel unto Bamoth. From Bamoth, is a valley in the country of Moab, to the top of Fazga, which looked towards the desert. And Israel sent messengers to Sahan king of the Amrites, saying, I beseech thee that I may have leave to pass through thy land, we will not go assigned into the fields or the vineyards, we will not drink waters of the wells, we will go the king's highway, till we be past thy borders. And he would not grant that Israel should pass by his borders, but rather gathering an army, went forth to meet them in the desert, and came to Jossa, and fought against them. And he was slain by them with the edge of the sword, and they possessed his land from the Arnon unto the Jabbok, and to the confines of the children of Ammon, for the borders of the Ammonites, were kept with a strong garrison. So Israel took all his cities, and dwelt in the cities of the Amrite, to wit, in Hesebon, and in the villages thereof. Hesebon was the city of Sihon the king of the Amrites, who fought against the king of Moab, and took all the land, that had been of his dominions, as far as the Arnon. Therefore it is said in the proverb, Come into Hesebon, let the city of Sihon be built and set up, a fire is gone out of Hesebon, a flame from the city of Sihon, and hath consumed Ar of the Moabites, and the inhabitants of the high places of the Arnon. Woe to thee Moab! Thou art undone, O people of Chamos. He hath given his sons to flight, and his daughters into captivity to Sihon the king of the Amorites. Their yoke is perished from Hesebon unto Dibn, they came weary to Nophi, and unto Madab. So Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorite. And Moses sent some to take a view of Jazer, and they took the villages of it, and conquered the inhabitants. And they turned themselves, 
and went up by the way of Basin, and Og the king of Basin came against them with all his people, to fight in Edrai. And the Lord said to Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him and all his people, and his country into thy hand, and thou shalt do to him as thou didst to Sihon the king of the Amorites, the inhabitant of Hesabon. So they slew him also with his sons, and all his people, not letting any one escape, and they possessed his land. Balak, king of Moab, sendeth twice for Balaam to curse Israel. In his way Balaam is rebuked by an angel. And they went forward and encamped in the plains of Moab, over against where Jericho is situate beyond the Jordan. And Balak the son of Sephir, seeing all that Israel had done to the Amorite, and that the Moabites were in great fear of him, and were not able to sustain his assault, he said to the elders of Madian, So will this people destroy all that dwell in our borders, as the ox is wont to eat the grass to the very roots. Now he was at that time king in Moab. He sent therefore messengers to Balaam the son of Beer, a soothsayer, who dwelt by the river of the land of the children of Ammon, to call him, and to say, Behold a people is come out of Egypt, that hath covered the face of the earth, sitting over against me. Come therefore, and curse this people, because it is mightier than I, if by any means I may beat them and drive them out of my land, for I know that he whom thou shalt bless is blessed, and he whom thou shalt curse is cursed. And the ancients of Moab, and the elders of Madian, went with the price of divination in their hands. And when they were come to Balaam, and had told him all the words of Balak, he answered, Tarry here this night, and I will answer whatsoever the Lord shall say to me. And while they stayed with Balaam, God came and said to him, What mean these men that are with thee? He answered, Balak the son of Sephir king of the Moabites, hath sent to me. Saying, Behold a people that is come out of Egypt, hath covered the face of the land, come and curse them, if by any means I may fight with them and drive them away. And God said to Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, nor shalt thou curse the people, because it is blessed. And he rose in the morning and said to the princes, Go into your country, because the Lord hath forbid me to come with you. The princes returning, said to Balak, Balaam would not come with us. Then he sent many more and more noble than he had sent before. Who, when they were come to Balaam, said, Thus saith Balak the son of Sephir, Delay not to come to me, for I am ready to honor thee, and will give thee whatsoever thou wilt, come and curse this people. Balaam answered, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot alter the word of the Lord my God, to speak either more or less. I pray you to stay here this night also that I may know what the Lord will answer me once more. God therefore came to Balaam in the night, and said to him, If these men be come to call thee, arise and go with them, yet so, that thou do what I shall command thee. To stay, his desiring them to stay, after he had been fully informed already that it was not God's will he should go, came from the inclination he had to gratify Balak, for the sake of worldly gain. And this perverse disposition God punished by permitting him to go, though not to curse the people as he would willingly have done, and suffering him to fall still deeper and deeper into sin, till he came at last to give that abominable counsel against the people of God, which ended in his own destruction. So sad a thing it is to indulge a passion for money. Balaam arose in the morning, and saddling his ass went with them. And God was angry. And an angel of the Lord stood in the way against Balaam who sat on the ass, and had two servants with him. The ass seeing the angel standing in the way, with a drawn sword, turned herself out of the way, and went into the field. And when Balaam beat her, and had a mind to bring her again to the way, the angel stood in a narrow place between two walls, wherewith the vineyards were unclosed. And the ass seeing him, thrust herself close to the wall, and bruised the foot of the rider. But he beat her again. And nevertheless the angel going on to a narrow place, where there was no way to turn aside either to the right hand or to the left, stood to meet him. And when the ass saw the angel standing, she fell under the feet of the rider, who being angry beat her sides more vehemently with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said, What have I done to thee? Why strikest thou me, lo, now this third time? Balaam answered, Because thou hast deserved it and hast served me ill, I would I had a sword that I might kill thee. 
The ass said, Am not I thy beast, on which thou hast been always accustomed to ride until this present day? Tell me if I ever did the like thing to thee. But he said, Never. Open the mouth, the angel moved the tongue of the ass, to utter these speeches, to rebuke, by the mouth of a brute beast, the brutal fury and folly of Balaam. Forthwith the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel standing in the way with a drawn sword, and he worshipped him falling flat on the ground. And the angel said to him, Why beatest thou thy ass these three times? I am come to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse, and contrary to me, and unless the ass had turned out of the way, giving place to me who stood against thee, I had slain thee, and she should have lived. Balaam said, I have sinned not knowing that thou didst stand against me, and now if it displease thee that I go, I will return. The angel said, Go with these men, and see thou speak no other thing than what I shall command thee. He went therefore with the princes. Reverse, because thy inclinations are wicked in being willing for the sake of gain to curse the people of whom I am the guardian. And when Balak heard it he came forth to meet him in a town of the Moabites that is situate in the uttermost borders of Arnon. And he said to Balaam, I sent messengers to call thee, why didst thou not come immediately to me? Was it because I am not able to reward thy coming? He answered him, Lo, here I am, shall I have power to speak any other thing but that which God shall put in my mouth? So they went on together, and came into a city, that was in the uttermost borders of his kingdom. And when Balak had killed oxen and sheep, he sent presents to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him, and when morning was come, he brought him to the high places of Baal, and he beheld the uttermost part of the people. Balaam, instead of cursing Israel, is obliged to bless them, and prophesy good things of them. And Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare as many calves, and the same number of rams. And when he had done according to the word of Balaam, they laid together a calf and a ram upon every altar. And Balaam said to Balak, Stand a while by thy burned offering, until I go, to see if perhaps the Lord will meet me, and whatsoever he shall command, I will speak to thee. And when he was gone with speed, God met him. And Balaam speaking to him, said, I have erected seven altars, and have laid on every one a calf and a ram. And the Lord put the word in his mouth, and said, Return to Balak and thus shalt thou speak. Returning he found Balak standing by his burnt offering, with all the princes of the Moabites, and taking up his parable, he said, Balak king of the Moabites hath brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east, come, said he, and curse Jacob, make haste and detest Israel. How shall I curse him, whom God hath not cursed? By what means should I detest him, whom the Lord detesteth not? I shall see him from the tops of the rocks, and shall consider him from the hills. This people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and know the number of the stock of Israel? Let my soul die the death of the just, and my last end be like to them. And Balak said to Balaam, What is this that thou dost? I sent for thee to curse my enemies, and thou contrarywise blessest them. He answered him, Call I speak anything else but what the Lord commandeth? Balak therefore said, Come with me to another place from whence thou mayest see part of Israel, and canst not see them all, curse them from thence. And when he had brought him to a high place, upon the top of Mount Fazga, Balaam built seven altars, and laying on every one a calf and a ram, he said to Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering while I go to meet him. And when the Lord had met him, and had put the word in his mouth, he said, Return to Balak, and thus shalt thou say to him. Returning he found him standing by his burnt sacrifice, and the princes of the Moabites with him. And Balak said to him, What hath the Lord spoken? But he taking up his parable, said, Stand, O Balak, and give ear, hear, thou son of Sephir, God is not a man, that he should lie, nor as the son of man, that he should be changed. Hath he said then, and will he not do? Hath he spoken, and will he not fulfill? I was brought to bless, the blessing I am not able to hinder. There is no idol in Jacob, neither is there an image God to be seen in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, 
and the sound of the victory of the king in him. God hath brought him out of Egypt, whose strength is like to the rhinoceros. There is no soothsaying in Jacob, nor divination in Israel. In their times it shall be told to Jacob and to Israel what God hath wrought. Behold the people shall rise up as a lioness, and shall lift itself up as a lion, it shall not lie down till it devour the prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse, nor bless him. And he said, Did I not tell thee, that whatsoever God should command me, that I would do? And Balak said to him, Come and I will bring thee to another place, if peradventure it please God that thou mayest curse them from thence. And when he had brought him upon the top of Mount Fugger, which looketh towards the wilderness, Balaam said to him, Build me here seven altars, and prepare as many calves, and the same number of rams. Balak did as Balaam had said, and he laid on every altar, a calf and a ram. Balaam still continues to prophesy good things in favor of Israel. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord that he should bless Israel, he went not as he had gone before, to seek divination, but setting his face towards the desert, and lifting up his eyes, he saw Israel abiding in their tents by their tribes, and the Spirit of God rushing upon him, he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Baer hath said, The man hath said, whose eye ire stopped up, the hearer of the words of God hath said, He that hath beheld the vision of the Almighty, he that falleth, and so his eyes are opened, how beautiful are thy tabernacles, O Jacob, and thy tents, O Israel! As woody valleys, as watered gardens near the rivers, as tabernacles which the Lord hath pitched, as cedars by the waterside. Water shall flow out of his bucket, and his seed shall be in many waters. For Agag his king shall be removed, and his kingdom shall be taken awry. God hath brought him out of Egypt, whose strength is like to the rhinoceros. They shall devour the nations that are his enemies, and break their bones, and pierce them with arrows. Lying down he hath slept as a lion, and as a lioness, whom none shall dare to rouse. He that blesseth thee, shall also himself be blessed, he that cursed thee shall be reckoned to cursed. And Balak being angry against Balaam, clapped his hands together and said, I called thee to curse my enemies, and thou on the contrary hast blessed them three times. Return to thy place. I had determined indeed greatly to honor thee, but the Lord hath deprived thee of the honor designed for thee. Balaam made answer to Balak, Did I not say to thy messengers, whom thou sentest to me, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold? I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God, to utter anything of my own head either good or evil, but whatsoever the Lord shall say, that I will speak. But yet going to my people, I will give thee counsel, what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. Therefore taking up his parable, again he said, Balaam the son of Baer hath said, the man whose eye is stopped up, hath said. The hearer of the words of God hath said, who knoweth the doctrine of the highest, and seeth the visions of the Almighty, to falling hath his eyes opened, I shall see him, but not now, I shall behold him, but not near. A star shall rise out of Jacob and a scepter shall spring up from Israel, and shall strike the chiefs of Moab, and shall waste all the children of Seth. And he shall possess Idumea, the inheritance of Seir shall come to their enemies, but Israel shall do manfully. Out of Jacob shall he come that shall rule, and shall destroy the remains of the city. And when he saw Amalek, he took up his parable, and said, Amalek the beginning of nations, whose latter ends shall be destroyed. He saw also the Sinite, and took up his parable, and said, Thy habitation indeed is strong, but though thou build thy nest in a rock, and thou be chosen of the stock of sin, how long shalt thou be able to continue? For Osir shall take thee captive. And taking up his parable, again he said, Alas! who shall live when God shall do these things. They shall come in galleys from Italy, they shall overcome the Assyrians, and shall waste the Hebrews, and at the last they themselves also shall perish. And Balaam rouse, and return to his place, Balak also returned the way that he came. The people fall into fornication and idolatry, for which twenty-four thousand are slain. The zeal of Phinees. And Israel at that time abode in Sedim. And the people committed fornication with the daughters of Moab, who called them to their sacrifices. 
and they ate of them, and adored their gods. And Israel was initiated to Belfgar, upon which the Lord being angry, said to Moses, Take all the princes of the people, and hang them up on gibbets against the sun, that my fury may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said to the judges of Israel, Let every man kill his neighbors, that have been initiated to Belfgar. Initiated to Belfgar, that is, they took to the worship of Belfgar, an obscene idol of the Moabites, and were consecrated, as it were, to him. And behold one of the children of Israel went and before his brethren to a harlot of Madian, in the sight of Moses, and of all the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle. And when Phinees the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest saw it, he rose up from the midst, of the multitude, and taking a dagger, went in after the Israelite into the brothel house, and thrust both of them through together, to wit, the man and the woman in the genital parts. And the scourge ceased from the children of Israel, and there were slain four and twenty thousand men. And the Lord said to Moses, Phinees the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned away my wrath from the children of Israel, because he was moved with my zeal against them, that I myself might not destroy the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore say to him, Behold I give him the peace of my covenant, and the covenant of the priesthood forever shall be both to him and his seed, because he hath been zealous for his God, and hath made atonement for the wickedness of the children of Israel. And the name of the Israelite, was slain with the woman of Madian, was Zambri the son of Salu, a prince the kindred and tribe of Simeon. And the Madianite woman, that was slain with him, was called Cosby the daughter of Sur, a most noble prince among the Madianites. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Let the Madianites find you enemies, and slay you them, because they also have acted like enemies against you, and have guiltfully deceived you by the idol figure and Cosby their sister, a daughter of a prince of Madian, who was slain in the day the plague for the sacrilege of Hagar. The people are again numbered by their tribes and families. After the blood of the guilty was shed, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar the son of Aaron, the priest, Number the whole sum of the children of Israel from twenty years old and upward, by their houses and kindreds, all that are able to go forth to war. Moses therefore and Eleazar the priest, being in the plains of Moab upon the Jordan over against Jericho, spoke to them that were from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord had commanded, and this is the number of them, Reuben the firstborn of Israel. His sons were Enoch, of whom is the family of the Enoshites, and Phu, of whom is the family of the Phaluites, and Hezron, of whom is the family of the Hezronites, and Charmi, of whom is the family of the Charmites. These are the families of the stock of Reuben whose number was found to be 43,730. The son of Phi was Eliab. His sons, were Namuel and Dathil and Abiron. These are Dathil and Abiron the princes of the people, that rose against Moses and Aaron in the sedition of Kor, when they rebelled against the Lord, and the earth opening her mouth swallowed up Kor, many others dying, when the fire burned 250 men. And there was a great miracle wrought that when Kor perished, his sons did not perish. The sons of Simeon by their kindreds, Namuel, of him is the family of the Namuelites, Jamin, of him is the family of the Jaminites, Jachin, of him is the family of the Jachinites, Zer, of him is the family of the Zerites, Saul, of him is the family of the Saulites. These are the families of the stock of Simeon, of which the whole number was 22,200. The sons of Gad by their kindreds, Siphon, of Hin, is the family of the Sephonites, Ai, of him is the family of the Ites, Sunni, of him is the family of the Sunites. Azni, of him is the family of the Aznites, Her, of him is the family of the Herits, Erod, of him is the family of the Erodites, Ariel, of him is the family of the Arielites. These are the families of Gad, of which the whole number was 40,500. The sons of Judah, Her, and Onan who both died in the land of Chenan. And the sons of Judah by their kindreds were, Selah, of whom is the family of the Selates, Phares, of whom is the family of the Theresites, Zer, of whom is the family of the Zerites. Moreover the sons of Phares were, Hezron, of whom is the family of the Hezronites, and Hamel, of whom is the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, 
of which the whole number was 76,500. The sons of Issachar, by their kindreds, Thola, of whom is the family of the Tholates, Fua, of whom is the family of the Fuates, Jasub, of whom is the family of the Jasubites, Simran, of whom is the family of the Simranites. These are the kindreds of Issachar, whose number was 64,300. The sons of Zabulon by their kindreds, Sard, of whom is the family of the Sardites, Alon, of whom is the family of the Alonites, Jal, of whom is the family of the Jalalites. These are the kindreds of Zabulon, whose number was 60,500. The sons of Joseph by their kindred, Manasses and Ephraim. Of Manasses was born Mature, of whom is the family of the Maturites. Mature begat Galad, of whom is the family of the Galadites. Galad had sons, Jezer, of whom is the family of the Jezerites, and Helek, of whom is the family of the Helicites, and Asriel, of whom is the family of the Asrielites, and Sikkim, of whom is the family of the Sikkimites, and Semuda, of whom is the family of the Semudates, and Hefer, of whom is the family of the Hetherites. And Hefer was the father of Salphad, who had no sons, but only daughters, whose names are these, Maula, and Noah, and Hegla, and Melcha, and Thursa. These are the families of Manasses, and the number of them 52,700. And the sons of Ephraim by their kindreds were these, Suthila, of whom is the family of the Suthalates, Becher, of whom is the family of the Bicherites, Theon, of whom is the family of the Theonites. Now the son of Suthila was Haran, of whom is the family of the Haranites. These are the kindreds of the sons of Ephraim, whose number was 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph by their families. The sons of Benjamin and their kindreds, Bela, of whom is the family of the Bilates, Asbel, of whom is the family of the Aspilites, Ahiram, of whom is the family of the Ahiramites, Sufim, of whom is the family of the Sufamites, Hufim, of whom is the family of the Hufamites. The sons of Bela, Hurt, and Noman. Of Hurt, is the family of the Heredites, of Noman, the family of Tilenomanites. These are the sons of Benjamin by their kindreds, whose number was 45,600. The sons of Dan by their kindreds, Suham, of whom is the family of the Suhamites. These are the kindreds of Dan by their families. All were Suhamites, whose number was 64,400. The sons of Aser by their kindreds, Gemma, of whom is the family of the Gemnates, Jesui, of whom is the family of the Jesuites, Bri of whom is the family of the Briites. The sons of Bri, Heber, of whom is the family of the Heberites, and Melchiel, of whom is the family of the Melchielites. And the name of the daughter of Aser, was Sarah. These are the kindreds of the sons of Aser, and their number 53,400. The sons of Mephli by their kindreds, Jeshiel, of whom is the family of the Jeshielites, Guni, of whom is the family of the Gunites, Jezer, of whom is the family of the Jezerites, Selim, of whom is the family of the Selimites. These are the kindreds of the sons of Nephli by their families, whose number was 45,400. This is the sum of the children of Israel, that were reckoned up, 601,730. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, To these shall the land be divided for their possessions according to the number of names. To the greater number thou shalt give a greater portion and to the fewer or less, to every one, as they have now been reckoned up, shall a possession be delivered, yet so that by lot the land be divided to the tribe and families. Whatsoever shall fall by lot, that shall be taken by the more, or the fewer. This also is the number of the sons of Levi by their families, Gerson, of whom is the family of the Gersonites, Kath, of whom is the family of the Cathites, Merari, of whom is the family of the Marirites. These are the families of Levi, the family of Labni, the family of Hebroni, the family of Mohali, the family of Musi, the family of Kor. Now Kath beget Amram, who had to wife Jochebed the daughter of Levi, who was horned to him in Egypt. She bore to her husband Amram sons, Aaron and Moses, and Mary their sister. Of Aaron were born Nadab and Abu, and Eleazar and Thamar. Of whom Nadab and Abu died when they had offered the strange fire before the Lord. And all that were numbered, were twenty-three thousand males from one month old and upward, 
for they were not reckoned up among the children of Israel, neither was a possession given to them with the rest. This is the number of the children of Israel, that were enrolled by Moses and Eleazar the priest, in the plains of Moab upon the Jordan, over against Jericho. Among whom there was not one of them that were numbered before by Moses and Aaron in the desert of Sinai. For the Lord had foretold that they should die in the wilderness. And none remained of them, but Caleb the son of Jephon, and Josu the son of Nun, the law of inheritance. Josu is appointed to succeed Moses. Then came the daughters of Salphad, the son of Hefer, the son of Galad, the son of Mature, the son of Manasses, who was the son of Joseph, and their names are Malna, and Noah, and Hegla, and Melcha, and Thursa. And they stood before Moses and Eleazar the priest, and all the princes of the people at the door of the tabernacle of the covenant, and said, Our father died in the desert, and was not in the sedition, that was raised against the Lord under Kor, but he died in his own sin, and he had no male children. Why is his name taken away out of his family, because he had no son? Give us a possession among the kinsmen of our father. And Moses referred their cause to the judgment of the Lord. And the Lord said to him, The daughters of South had demand a just thing, give them a possession among their father's kindred, and let them succeed him in his inheritance. And to the children of Israel thou shalt speak these things, When a man dieth without a son, his inheritance shall pass to his daughter. If he have no daughter, his brethren shall succeed him. And if he have no brethren, you shall give the inheritance to his father's brethren. But if he have no uncles by the father, the inheritance shall be given to them that are the next of kin. And this shall be to the children of Israel sacred by a perpetual law, as the Lord hath commanded Moses. The Lord also said to Moses, Go up into this mountain of Brim, and view from thence the land which I will give to the children of Israel. And when thou shalt have seen it, thou also shalt go to thy people, as thy brother Aaron is gone because you offended me in the desert of sin in a contradiction of the multitude, neither would you sanctify me before them at the waters. These are the waters of contradiction and caves of the desert of sin. And Moses answered him, May the Lord the God of the spirits of all flesh provide a man, that may be over this multitude, and may go out and in before them, and may lead them out, or bring them in, lest the people of the Lord be as sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said to him, Take Josu the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and put thy hand upon him. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest and all the multitude, and thou shalt give him precepts in the sight of all, and part of thy glory, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may hear him. If anything be to be done, Eleazar the priest shall consult the Lord for him. He and all the children of Israel with him, and the rest of the multitude shall go out and go in at his word. Moses did as the Lord had commanded. And when he had taken Josu, he set him before Eleazar the priest, and all the assembly of the people, and laying his hands on his head, he repeated all things that the Lord had commanded. Sacrifices are appointed as well for every day as for Sabbaths, and other festivals. The Lord also said to Moses, Command the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, Offer ye my oblation and my bread and burnt sacrifice of most sweet odor, in their due seasons. These are the sacrifices which you shall offer, two lambs of a year old without blemish every day for the perpetual holocaust, one you shall offer in the morning, and the other in the evening, and the tenth part of an ephi of flour, which shall be tempered with the purest oil, of the measure of the fourth part of a hen. It is the continual holocaust which you offered in Mount Sinai for a most sweet, odor of a sacrifice by fire to the Lord. And for a libation you shall offer of wine the fourth part of a hen for every lamb in the sanctuary of the Lord. And you shall offer the other lamb in like manner ill the evening according to all the rites of the morning sacrifice, and of the libations thereof, an oblation of most sweet odor to the Lord. And on the Sabbath day you shall offer two lambs of a year old without blemish, and two tenths of flour tempered with oil in sacrifice, and the libations, which regularly are poured out every Sabbath for the perpetual holocaust. And on the first day of the month you shall offer a holocaust to the Lord, two calves of the herd, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old, without blemish, and three-tenths of flour tempered with oil in sacrifice for every calf, 
and two tenths of flour tempered with oil for every ram, and the tenth of a tenth of flour tempered with oil in sacrifice for every lamb. It is a holocaust of most sweet odor and an offering by fire to the Lord. And these shall be the libations of wine that are to be poured out for every victim, half a hen for every calf, a third for a ram, and a fourth for a lamb. This shall be the holocaust for every month, as they succeed one another in the course of the year. A buck goat also shall be offered to the Lord for a sin offering over and above the perpetual holocaust with its libations. And in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, shall be the phase of the Lord, and on the fifteenth day the solemn feast, seven days shall they eat unleavened bread. And the first day of them shall be venerable and holy, you shall not do any servile work therein. And you shall offer a burnt sacrifice a holocaust to the Lord, two calves of the herd, one ram, seven lambs of a year old, without blemish, and for the sacrifices of every one three tenths of flour which shall be tempered with oil to every calf, and two tenths to every ram. And the tenth of a tenth, to every lamb, that is to say, to all the seven lambs, and one buck goat for sin, to make atonement for you, besides the morning holocaust which you shall always offer. So shall you do every day of the seven days for the food of the fire, and for a most sweet odor to the Lord, which shall rise from the holocaust, and from the libations of each. The seventh day also shall be most solemn and holy unto you, you shall do no servile work therein. The day also of first fruits, when after the weeks are accomplished, you shall offer new fruits to the Lord, shall be venerable and holy, you shall do no servile work therein and you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, two calves of the herd, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old, without blemish, and in the sacrifices of them three tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, two to every ram, the tenth of a tenth to every lamb, which in all are seven lambs, a buck goat also, which is slain for expiation, besides the perpetual holocaust and the libations thereof. You shall offer them all without blemish with their libations. Sacrifices for the festivals of the seventh month. The first day also of the seventh month shall be venerable and holy unto you, you shall do no servile work therein, because it is the day of the sounding and of trumpets. And you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, one calf of the herd, one ram and seven lambs of a year old, without blemish. And for their sacrifices, three tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, two tenths to a ram, one tenth to a lamb, which in all are seven lambs, and a buck goat for sin, which is offered for the expiation of the people. Besides the holocaust of the first day of the month with the sacrifices thereof, and the perpetual holocaust with the accustomed libations, with the same ceremonies you shall offer a burnt sacrifice for a most sweet odor to the Lord. The tenth day also of this seventh month shall be holy and venerable unto you, and you shall afflict your souls, you shall do no servile work therein. And you shall offer a holocaust to the Lord for a most sweet odor, one calf of the herd, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old, without blemish, and for their sacrifices, three tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, two tenths to a ram, the tenth of a tenth to every lamb, which are in all seven lambs and a buck goat for sin, besides the things that are wont to be offered for sin, for expiation, and for the perpetual holocaust with their sacrifice and libations. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which shall be unto you holy and venerable, you shall do no servile work, but shall celebrate a solemnity to the Lord seven days. And you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, thirteen calves of the herd, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old without blemish, and for their libations three tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, being in all thirteen calves, and two tenths to each ram, being two rams, and the tenth of a tenth to every lamb, being in all fourteen lambs, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. On the second day you shall offer twelve calves of the herd, two rams and fourteen lambs of a year old without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations for every one, for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall do lay celebrate, and a buck goat for a sin offering besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof.
The third day you shall offer eleven calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish. And the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall offer according to the right, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice, and the libation thereof. The fourth day you shall offer tell calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate in right manner, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. The fifth day you shall offer nine calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the right, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. The sixth day you shall offer eight calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the right and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. The seventh day you shall offer seven calves and two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the right, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. On the eighth day, which is most solemn, you shall do no servile work. But you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, one calf, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the right, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. These things shall you offer to the Lord in your solemnities, besides your vows and voluntary oblations for holocaust, for sacrifice, for libation, and for victims of peace offerings, of vows and oaths, and their obligation. And Moses told the children of Israel all that the Lord had commanded him, and he said to the princes of the tribes of the children of Israel, This is the word that the Lord hath commanded, if any man make a vow to the Lord, or bind himself by an oath, he shall not make his word void but shall fulfill all that he promised. If a woman vow anything, and bind herself by an oath, being in her father's house, and but yet a girl in age, if her father knew the vow that she hath promised, and the oath wherewith she hath bound her soul, and held his peace, she shall be bound by the vow, whatsoever she promised and swore, she shall fulfill indeed. But if her father, immediately as soon as he heard it, gainsaid it, both her vows and her oaths shall be void, neither shall she be bound to what she promised, because her father hath gainsaid it. If she have a husband, and shall vow anything, and the word once going out of her mouth shall bind her soul by an oath, the day that her husband shall hear it, and not gainsay it, she shall be bound to the vow, and shall give whatsoever she promised. But if as soon as he heareth he gainsay it, and make her promises and the words wherewith she had bound her soul of no effect, the Lord will forgive her. The widow, and she that is divorced, shall fulfill whatsoever they vow. If the wife in the house of her husband, hath bound herself by vow and by oath, if her husband hear, and hold his peace, and doth not disallow the promise, she shall accomplish whatsoever she had promised. But if forthwith he gainsay it, she shall not be bound by the promise, because her husband gainsaid it, and the Lord will be merciful to her. If she vow and bind herself by oath, to afflict her soul by fasting, or abstinence from other things, it shall depend on the will of her husband, whether she shall do it, or not do it. But if the husband hearing it hold his peace, and defer the declaring his mind till another day, whatsoever she had vowed and promised, she shall fulfill, because immediately as he heard it, he held his peace. But if he gainsay it after that he knew it, he shall bear her iniquity. These are the laws which the Lord appointed to Moses between the husband and the wife, between the father and the daughter that is as yet but a girl in age, or that abideth in her father's house. The Madianites are slain for having drawn the people of Israel into sin. The Dividing of the Booty 
And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Revenge first the children of Israel on the Madianites, and so thou shalt be gathered to thy people. And Moses forthwith said, Arm of you men to fight, who may take the revenge of the Lord on the Madianites. Let a thousand men be chosen out of every tribe of Israel to be sent to the war. And they gave a thousand of every tribe, that is to say, twelve thousand men well appointed for battle. And Moses sent them with Phinees the son of Eleazar the priest, and he delivered to him the holy vessels, and the trumpets to sound. And when they had fought against the Madianites and had overcome them, they slew all the men. And their king Zevi, and Rissam, and Sur, and Hur, and Reb, five princes of the nation, Balaam also the son of Beer they killed with the sword. And they took their women, and their children captives, and all their cattle, and all their goods, and all their possessions they plundered, and all their cities, and their villages, and castles, they burned. And they carried away the booty, and all that they had taken both of men and of beasts. And they brought them to Moses, and Eleazar the priest, and to all the multitude of the children of Israel. But the rest of the things for use they carried to the camp on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan over against Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the synagogue went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses being angry with the chief officers of the army, the tribunes, and the centurions that were come from the battle, said, Why have you saved the women? Are not these they? that deceived the children of Israel by the counsel of Balaam, and made you transgress against the Lord by the sin of Fugger, for which also the people was punished? Therefore kill all that are of the male sex, even of the children, and put to death the women, that have carnally known men. But the girls, and all the women that are virgins save for yourselves, and stay without the camp seven days. He that hath killed a man, or touched one that is killed, shall be purified the third day and the seventh day. And of all the spoil, every garment, or vessel, or anything made for use, of the skins, or hair of goats, or of wood, shall be purified. The sin of Fugger, the sin committed in the worship of Belfgur. Of the children, women and children, ordinarily speaking, were not to be killed in war, dut. But the great lord of life and death was pleased to order it otherwise in the present case, in detestation of the wickedness of this people who by the counsel of Balaam, had sent their women among the Israelites on purpose to draw them from God. Eleazar also the priest spoke to the men of the army, that had fought, in this manner, this is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord hath commanded Moses, gold, and silver, and brass, and iron, and lend, and tin, and all that may pass through the fire, shall be purified by fire, but whatsoever cannot abide the fire, shall be sanctified with the water of expiation, and you shall wash your garments the seventh day, and being purified, you shall afterwards enter into the camp. And the Lord said to Moses, Take the sum of the things that were taken both of man and beast, thou and Eleazar the priest and the princes of the multitude, and thou shalt divide the spoil equally, between them that fought and went out to the war, and between the rest of the multitude. And thou shalt separate a portion to the Lord from them that fought and were in the battle, one soul of five hundred as well of persons as of oxen and asses and sheep. And thou shalt give it to Eleazar the priest, because they are the first fruits of the Lord. Out of the moiety also of the children of Israel thou shalt take the fiftieth head of persons, and of oxen, and asses, and sheep, and of all beasts, and thou shalt give them to the Levites that watch in the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar did as the Lord had commanded. And the spoil which the army had taken, was six hundred seventy-five thousand sheep, seven tie two thousand oxen, six tie one thousand asses, and third tie two thousand persons of the female sex, that had not known men. And one half was given to them that had been in the battle, to wit, three hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred sheep, out of which, for the portion of the Lord, were reckoned six hundred seventy-five sheep. And out of the thirty-six thousand oxen, seven I two oxen, out of the thirty thousand five hundred asses, sixty-one asses, out of the sixteen thousand persons, there fell to the portion of the Lord, thirty two souls. And Moses delivered the number of the first fruits of the Lord to Eleazar the priest, as had been commanded him, out of the half of the children of Israel, which he had separated for them that had been in the battle. 
but out of the half that fell to the rest of the multitude, that is to say, out of the 337,500 sheep, and out of the 36,000 oxen, and out of the 30,500 asses. And out of the 16,000 persons, Moses took the fiftieth head, and gave it to the Levites that watched in the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord had commanded. And when the commanders of the army, and the tribunes and centurions were come to Moses, they said, We thy servants have reckoned up the number of the fighting men, whom we had under our hand, and not so much as one was wanting. Therefore we offer as gifts to the Lord what gold every one of us could find in the booty, in garters and tablets, rings and bracelets, and chains, that thou mayst pray to the Lord for us. And Moses and Eleazar the priest received all the gold in divers kinds, in weight sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty sickles, from the tribunes and from the centurions. For that which every one had taken in the booty was his own. And that which was received they brought into the tabernacle of the testimony, for a memorial of the children of Israel before the Lord. The tribes of Reuben and Gad, and half of the tribe of Manasseh, received their inheritance on the east side of Jordan, upon conditions approved of by Moses. And the sons of Reuben and Gad had many flocks of cattle, and their substance in beasts was infinite. And when they saw the lands of Jazer and Galad fit for feeding cattle, they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest, and the princes of the multitude, and said, Ataroth, and Dib, and Jazer, and Nimrah, Hesebon, and Eliel, and Saban, and Nebo, and Bon, the land, which the Lord hath conquered in the sight of the children of Israel, is a very fertile soil for the feeding of beasts, and we thy servants have very much cattle, and we pray thee, if we have found favor in thy sight, that thou give it to us thy servants in possession, and make us not pass over the Jordan. And Moses answered them, What, shall your brethren go to fight, and will you sit here? Why do ye overturn the minds of the children of Israel, that they may not dare to pass into the place which the Lord hath given them? Was it not thus your fathers did, when I sent from Cade's barn to view the land? And when they were come as far as the valley of the cluster, having viewed all the country, they overturned the hearts of the children of Israel, that they should not enter into the coasts, which the Lord gave them. And he swore in his anger, saying, If these men, that came up out of Egypt, from twenty years old and upward, shall see the land, which I promised with an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they would not follow me, except Caleb the son of Jephon the Senatesite, and Josu the son of Nun, these have fulfilled my will. And the Lord being angry against Israel, led them about through the desert forty years, until the whole generation, that had done evil in his sight, was consumed. And behold, said he, you are risen up instead of your fathers, the increase and offspring of sinful men, to augment the fury of the Lord against Israel. For if you will not follow him, he will leave the people in the wilderness, and you shall be the cause of the destruction of all. But they coming near, said, We will make sheepfolds, and stalls for our cattle, and strong cities for our children, and we ourselves will go armed and ready for battle before the children of Israel, until we bring them in unto their places. Our little ones, and all we have, shall be in walled cities, for fear of the ambushes of the inhabitants. We will not return into our houses until the children of Israel possess their inheritance, neither will we seek anything beyond the Jordan because we have already our possession on the east side thereof. And Moses said to them, If you do what you promise, go on well appointed for war before the Lord. And let every fighting man pass over the Jordan, until the Lord overthrow his enemies, and all the land be brought under him, then shall you be blameless before the Lord and before Israel, and you shall obtain the countries that you desire, before the Lord. But if you do not what you say, no man can doubt but you sin against God, and know ye, that your sin shall overtake you. Build therefore cities for your children, and folds and stalls for your sheep and beasts, and accomplish what you have promised. And the children of Gad and Reuben said to Moses, We are thy servants, we will do what my Lord commandeth. We will leave our children, and our wives and sheep and cattle, in the cities of Galad, and we thy servants all well appointed will march on to the war, as thou, my Lord, speakest. Moses therefore commanded Eleazar the priest, and Josu the son of Nun, 
and the princes of the families of all the tribes of Israel, and said to them, If the children of Gad, and the children of Reuben pass with you over the Jordan, all armed for war before the Lord, and the land be made subject to you, give them Galad in possession. But if they will not pass armed with you into the land of Chanan, let them receive places to dwell in among you. And the children of Gad, and the children of Reuben answered, As the Lord hath spoken to his servants, so will we do, we will go armed before the Lord into the land of Chanan, and we confess that we have already received our possession beyond the Jordan. Moses therefore gave to the children of Gad and of Reuben, and to the half-tribe of Manasses the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon king of the Amrites, and the kingdom of Og king of Busan, and their land and the cities thereof round about. And the sons of Cad built Dibn, and Atroth, and Aror, and Etroth, and Sophan, and Jazer, and Jegba, and Beth Nemra, and Betharin, fenced cities, and folds for their cattle. But the children of Reuben built Hesebon, and Eliel, and carried Haim, and Nabo, and Balmian, their names being changed, and Sabama, giving names to the cities which they had built. Moreover the children of Mature, the son of Manasses, went into Galad, and wasted it, cutting off the Amrites, the inhabitants thereof. And Moses gave the land of Galad to Mature the son of Manasses, and he dwelt in it. And Jerry the son of Manasses went, and took the villages thereof, and he called them Havoth Jer, that is to say, the villages of Jer. Nobi also went, and took Canoth with the villages thereof, and he called it by his own name, Nobi. The Mansions or Journeys of the Children of Israel Towards the Land of Promise These are the mansions of the children of Israel, who went out of Egypt by their troops under the conduct of Moses and Aaron, which Moses wrote down according to the places of their encamping, which they changed by the commandment of the Lord. Now the children of Israel departed from Ramesses the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month, the day after the phase, with a mighty hand, in the eight of all the Egyptians, who were bearing their firstborn, whom the Lord had slain, upon their gods also he had executed vengeance, and they camped in Sakoth, the mansions, these mansions, or journeys of the children of Israel from Egypt to the land of promise, were figures, according to the fathers, of the steps and degrees by which Christians leaving sin are to advance from virtue to virtue, till they come to the heavenly mansions, after this life, to see and enjoy God. And from Sakoth they came into Etham, which is in the uttermost borders of the wilderness. Departing from thence they came over against Phihahirath, which looketh towards Beelsphon, and they camped before Magdalam. And departing from Phihahirath, they passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and having marched three days through the desert of Etham, they camped in Marah. And departing from Marah, they came into Elam, where there were twelve fountains of waters, and seventy palm trees, and there they camped. But departing from thence also, they pitched their tents by the Red Sea. And departing from the Red Sea, they camped in the desert of Sin. And they removed from thence, and came to Dafka. And departing from Dafka, they camped in Alus. And departing from Alus, they pitched their tents in Raphidim, where the people wanted water to drink. And departing from Raphidim, they camped in the desert of Sinai. But departing also from the desert of Sinai, they came to the graves of lust. And departing from the graves of lust, they camped in Hazaroth. And from Hazaroth they came to Rethum. And departing from Rethum, they camped in Remomphers. And they departed from thence and came to Lebna. Removing from Lebna they camped in Ressa. And departing from Ressa, they came to Selatha. And they removed from thence and camped in the mountain Sefer. Departing from the mountain Sefer, they came to Arada. From thence they went and camped in Makloth. And departing from Makloth, they came to Thahoth. Removing from Thahoth they camped in Thare. And they departed from thence, and pitched their tents in Methka. And removing from Methka, they camped in Hesmona. And departing from Hesmona, they came to Mosaroth. And removing from Mosaroth, they camped in Benajekan. And departing from Benajekan, they came to Mount Gagad. From thence they went and camped in Jaitbitha. And from Jaitbitha they came to Hebrona. And departing from Hebrona, they camped in Ajngabur.
they removed from thence and came into the desert of Sin, which is Cades. And departing from Cades, they camped in Mount Hur, in the uttermost borders of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hur at the commandment of the Lord, and there he died in the fortieth year of the coming forth of the children of Israel out of Egypt, the fifth month, the first day of the month, when he was a hundred and twenty-three years old. And King Arad the Chananite, who dwelt towards the south, heard that the children of Israel were come to the land of Chanan. And they departed from Mount Hur, and camped in Samona. From whence they removed and came to Funan. And departing from Funan, they camped in Oboth. And from Oboth they came to Ijabarim, which is in the borders of the Moabites. And departing from Ijabarim they pitched their tents in Dibon Gab. From thence they went and camped in Helman Bledhaim. And departing from Helman Bledhaim, they came to the mountains of Abram over against Nabo. And departing from the mountains of Abram, they passed to the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, over against Jericho. And there they camped from Bethsimoth even to Abel Zetim in the plains of the Moabites, where the Lord said to Moses, Command the children of Israel, and say to them, When you shall have passed over the Jordan, entering into the land of Chanan, destroy all the inhabitants of that land, beat down their pillars, and break in pieces their statues, and waste all their high places, cleansing the land, and dwelling in it. For I have given it you for a possession. And you shall divide it among you by lot. To the more you shall give a larger part, and to the fewer a lesser. To every one as the lot shall fall, so shall the inheritance be given. The possession shall be divided by the tribes and the families. But if you will not kill the inhabitants of the land, they that remain, shall be unto you as nails in your eyes, and spears in your sides, and they shall be your adversaries in the land of your habitation. And whatsoever I had thought to do to them, I will do to you. The limits of Chanan, with the names of the men that make the division of it. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and then shalt say to them, When you are entered into the land of Chanan, and it shall be fallen into your possession by lot, it shall be bounded by these limits, the south side shall begin from the wilderness of Sin, which is by Edom, and shall have the most salt sea for its furthest limits eastward, which limits shall go round on the south side by the ascent of the scorpion and so into Senna, and reach toward the south as far as Cade's barn from whence the frontiers shall go out to the town called Adar, and shall reach as far as Asimona. And the limits shall fetch a compass from Asimona to the torrent of Egypt, and shall end in the shore of the great sea. The most salt sea, the lake of Sodom, otherwise called the Dead Sea. The Scorpion, a mountain so called from having a great number of scorpions. The Great Sea, the Mediterranean. And the west side shall begin from the Great Sea and the same shall be the end thereof. But toward the north side the border shall begin from the great sea, reaching to the most high mountain, from which they shall come to Amath, as far as the borders of Sedata, and the limits shall go as far as Zephrona, and the village of Anan. These shall be the borders on the north side. From thence they shall mark out the bounds towards the east side from the village of Anan unto Sephama. The most high mountain, Libanus. And from Sephama the bounds shall go down to Rebla over against the fountain of Daphnis, from thence they shall come eastward to the sea of Senrath, and shall reach as far as the Jordan, and at the last shall be closed in by the most salt sea. This shall be your land with its borders round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This shall be the land which you shall possess by lot, and which the Lord hath commanded to be given to the nine tribes, and to the half-tribe for the tribe of the children of Reuben by their families, and the tribe of the children of Gad according to the number of their kindreds, and half of the tribe of Manasses, that is, two tribes and a half, have received their portion beyond the Jordan over against Jericho at the east side. Sea of Senrath, this is the Sea of Galilee, illustrated by the miracles of our Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, These are the names of the men, that shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest and Josu the son of Nun, and one prince of every tribe, whose names are these, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the sons of Jephon. Of the tribe of Simeon, Samuel the son of Amiad. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Chaslin. 
of the tribe of the children of Dan, Boxai the son of Jogli. Of the children of Joseph of the tribe of Manasses, Hanil the son of Ephod. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Camuel the son of Siphon. Of the tribe of Zabulon, Elisaphan the son of Farnak, of the tribe of Issachar, Faltiel the prince, the son of Ozan. Of the tribe of Aser, Ahid the son of Salome. Of the tribe of Nephli, Fedael the son of Amiad. These are they whom the Lord hath commanded to divide the land of Chanan to the children of Israel. Cities are appointed for the Levites, of which six are to be the cities of refuge. And the Lord spoke these things also to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan, over against Jericho, command the children of Israel that they give to the Levites out of their possessions, cities to dwell in, and their suburbs round about, that they may abide in the towns, and the suburbs may be for their cattle and beasts, which suburbs shall reach from the walls of the cities outward, a thousand paces on every side, toward the east shall be two thousand cubits and toward the south in like manner shall be two thousand cubits, toward the sea also, which looketh to the west, shall be the same extent, and the north side shall be bounded with the like limits. And the cities shall be in the midst, and the suburbs without. And among the cities, which you shall give to the Levites, six shall be separated for refuge to fugitives, that he who hath shed blood may flee to them, and besides these there shall be other forty two cities, that is, in all forty-eight with their suburbs. And of these cities which shall be given out of the possessions of the children of Israel, from them that have more, more shall be taken, and from them that have less, fewer. Each shall give towns to the Levites according to the extent of their inheritance. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, When you shall have passed over the Jordan into the land of Chanan. Determine what cities shall be for the refuge of fugitives who have shed blood against their will. And when the fugitive shall be in them, the kinsmen of him that is slain may not have power to kill him, until he stand before the multitude, and his cause be judged. And of those cities, that are separated for the refuge of fugitives, three shall be beyond the Jordan, and three in the land of Chanan, as well for the children of Israel as for strangers and sojourners, that he may flee to them, who hath shed blood against his will. If any man strike with iron, and he die that was struck, he shall be guilty of murder, and he himself shall die. If he throw a stone, and he that is struck die, he shall be punished in the same manner. If he that is struck with wood die, he shall be revenged by the blood of him that struck him. The kinsman of him that was slain, shall kill the murderer, as soon as he apprehendeth him, he shall kill him. If through hatred any one push a man, or fling anything at him with ill design, or being his enemy, strike, him with his hand, and he die, the striker shall be guilty of murder, the kinsman of him that was slain as soon as he findeth him, shall kill him. But if by chance medley, and without hatred, and enmity, he do any of these things, and this be proved in the hearing of the people, and the cause be debated between him that struck, and the next of kin, the innocent shall be delivered from the hand of the revenger, and shall be brought back by sentence into the city to which he had fled, and he shall abide there until the death of the high priest, that is anointed with the holy oil. Until the death, this mystically signified that our deliverance was to be effected by the death of Christ, the high priest and the anointed of God. If the murderer be found without the limits of the cities that are appointed for the banished, and be struck by him that is the avenger of blood, he shall not be guilty that killed him. For the fugitive ought to have stayed in the city until the death of the high priest. And after he is dead, then shall the manslayer return to his own country. These things shall be perpetual, and for an ordinance in all your dwellings. The murderer shall be punished by witnesses, none shall be condemned upon the evidence of one man. You shall not take money of him that is guilty of blood, but he shall die forthwith. The banished and fugitives before the death of the high priest may by no means return into their own cities. Defile not the land of your habitation which is stained with the blood of the innocent, neither can it otherwise be expiated, but by his blood that hath shed the blood of another. And thus shall your possession he cleansed, myself abiding with you. For I am the Lord that dwell among the children of Israel. That the inheritances may not be alienated from one tribe to another, all are to marry within their own tribes. And the princes of the families of Galad, the son of Mature, 
the son of Manasses, of the stock of the children of Joseph, came and spoke to Moses before the princes of Israel, and said, The Lord hath commanded thee, my Lord, that thou shouldst divide the land by lot to the children of Israel, and that thou shouldst give to the daughters of South had our brother the possession due to their father, now if men of another tribe take them to wives, their possession will follow them, and being transferred to another tribe, will be a diminishing of our inheritance. And so it shall come to pass, that when the jubilee, that is, the fiftieth year of remission, is come, the distribution made by the lots shall be confounded, and the possession of the one shall pass to the others. Moses answered the children of Israel, and said by the command of the Lord, The tribe of the children of Joseph hath spoken rightly. And this is the law promulgated by the Lord touching the daughters of Southad, Let them marry to whom they will, only so that it be to men of their own tribe. Lest the possession of the children of Israel be mingled from tribe to tribe. For all men shall marry wives of their own tribe and kindred, and all women shall take husbands of the same tribe that the inheritance may remain in the families, and that the tribes be not mingled one with another, but remain so as they were separated by the Lord. And the daughters of South had did as was commanded. And Malah, and Thursa, and Hegla, and Melcha, and Noah were married to the sons of their uncle by their father, of the family of Manasses, who was the son of Joseph, and the possession that had been allotted to them, remained in the tribe and family of their father. These are the commandments and judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses to the children of Israel, in the plains of Moab upon the Jordan over against Jericho.